Starting with question A, question A says derive the multiplier associated with autonomous spending. We start by saying the aggregate demand is equal to the consumption plus the investment plus the government spending. And given that this is the consumption and this is the investment which is autonomous and the G is also autonomous. So we substitute this into the aggregate demand function. So we have aggregate demand will be equal to the consumption is the autonomous consumption represented with C bar plus small letter C which represent the MPC. Then we open the bracket, the income plus the transfer payment minus the lump sum tax. Then we close the bracket. This is the consumption plus I bar which represent autonomous investment. And last, we substitute the government spending, which is represented with G bar, which means autonomous government spending, plus G bar. Now, we assume that if the economy is at equilibrium, we expect the level of income to be equal to the aggregate demand in the economy. So, which means we say Y equals we substitute the aggregate demand function, which is C bar plus the MPC, open the bracket, the income plus the transfer payment, which is autonomous. This is autonomous and the tax is also autonomous. So the autonomous transfer payment minus the autonomous tax, then close the bracket, plus the autonomous investment plus the autonomous government spending. Next, we open the bracket on the right, so we have y equals the autonomous consumption plus the MPCC multiplied with y, that will give us CY, the MPCC multiplied with the autonomous transfer payment, that will give us plus CTR bar, then we have the C multiplied with autonomous tax. That will give us plus C autonomous tax, then plus autonomous investment plus autonomous government spending. So collecting like terms, all values with Y should come to the left and all values without Y should stay on the right. So we have Y. This CY will come to the left. So we have minus CY then equals autonomous consumption plus the MPC multiplied with the autonomous transfer payment plus the MPC multiplied with autonomous tax plus autonomous investment plus autonomous government spending. Simplifying this, Y minus CY, we take the Y out. Once we take the Y out, we open a bracket. Once we take the Y out of here, what is left there is 1. So we have 1, then once we take the y out of this, minus cy, if we take a y out, what is left is minus c. So we have 1 minus c. If you open this bracket, you will end up with this. That is the way you confirm your answer. So y into bracket 1 minus c is equal to autonomous consumption plus c multiplied by autonomous transfer payment plus C multiply with autonomous tax, plus autonomous investment, plus government spending. Now, to make this easy, since all of these identities here are autonomous, let's just represent them with A bar. Thus, A bar represents autonomous spending. We can rewrite at equilibrium y into bracket 1 minus c will be equal to all autonomous spendings. So making the y standing on the left, we have y equals autonomous spendings divided by 1 minus c. So we can rewrite this as y equals 1 over 
1 minus C multiply with autonomous spending. So this means a change in Y divided by a change in any of the autonomous spending will give us a result of 1 over 1 minus C. Thus, we can say that 1 over 1 minus C is the multiplier. That is, if any of the autonomous spending change by 1 unit, we expect the change in the income to be 1 over 1 minus C. And this is the derivation of the multiplier. Question B says, assume the MPC equals 0 0.8. What is the value of the multiplier? And we should interpret the multiplier. B. MPC equals 0 0.8 simply means the small letter C equals 0 0.80 or we can just say 0 0.8. We need to calculate the value of the multiplier. So from here, we've already gotten that the multiplier is 1 over 1 minus C. So for simplicity, let's represent the multiplier with K. So k, which is the multiplier, equals 1 over 1 minus c. So this means the multiplier k equals 1 over 1 minus c is given as 0 0.8. So we close the bracket. Hence, k equals 1 over 0 0.2. 1 minus 0 0.8 is 0 0.2. So k equals 1 divided by 0 0.2 will give us 5. So this means that the multiplier here is 5. An important thing we can take note of is this 0 0.2 is gotten by saying 1 minus c because this was 1 minus c. So this 0 0.2 is gotten by saying 1 minus c and this 0 0.2 is nothing but small letter s. This small letter s is the marginal propensity to save or in short form, the MPS. So this means that we can also write the multiplier as equal to 1 over S. In this simple case, it can be represented as such. Now that we found the multiplier as 5, we need to interpret it. So how do we interpret this multiplier? We interpret it by saying, if the autonomous spending changes by $1 or 1 unit, we expect that the change in the income or the change in the output will be equivalent to 5. So again, a change in the autonomous spending in any of the autonomous spending by $1, we expect that the change in the output will be equal to 1 over 1 minus C. So if any of the autonomous spending changes by $1, we expect the income or the output to change by $5. Now let's move on to question C. Question C says, suppose that the government expenditure on goods and services decreases by $1,000, calculates the change in output and show on a diagram. C. Change in government expenditure, that is, there is a change in G, and the change in G is a decrease, so which means it decreased by $1,000, or we can represent as change in G equals negative $1,000 because it is a decrease. So we need to calculate the change in output or income. So the easiest way to go about this is with the use of the multiplier. Recall that while we're deriving the multiplier, we said y equals 1 over 1 minus c multiplied by all autonomous spending. And then we said a change in y will be equal to this 1 over 1 minus c is the multiplier represented with k. So we have change in y equals k multiply with change in any of the autonomous spending. Now, G was part of the 
autonomous spending. So the change in the autonomous spending in this case is resulting from the government spending. Thus, we can rewrite this as change in y equals k multiplied by change in government spending. So applying this change in y equals k multiplied with change in government spending, we are going to have change in y equals the multiplier we got was 5 then multiply with the change in the government spending the change in the government spending is negative one thousand dollars negative because it is reducing so that means change in y will be equal to five times one thousand that will give us negative five thousand so this means the y or the income will decrease by five thousand dollars if government expenditure decrease by one thousand dollars income or output will decrease by five thousand dollars if government decrease their expenditure by one thousand dollars now how do we represent this on a diagram we represent this on a diagram called the Keynesian cross. To draw the Keynesian cross, we have the vertical axis and we have the horizontal axis. On the vertical axis here, we have the aggregate demand or the total expenditure in the economy. And on the horizontal axis, we have the level of income, which is Y. Next, we draw a 45 degree line. This 45 degree line represents all possible equilibrium points that is all possible points where the aggregate demand or the total expenditure in the economy is equal to the level of income or the level of output in the economy thus the initial level of equilibrium let's represent it with this line so here ad is equal to that means this point is where the aggregate demand is equal to the level of income so we have the first level of income here now given that the income decreases by five thousand when the government expenditure decreased by one thousand dollars that means the equilibrium point is going to decrease thus we represent it on this graph by drawing a line below the original line so this is the new ad so this is the new equilibrium point so we have this as the second level of income so the first level of income the second level of income this will give us the change in y and here the change in y is negative because the y2 is less than the y1 so we can say this change in y here is this minus five thousand that we have so change in y equals minus five thousand and this is the representation of this situation c on the graph to make the graph readable let's note it with the arrows to show that it is decreasing and of course the gap between this aggregate demand and this aggregate demand here the gap here is nothing but the change in the government spending this is what created the gap so what created the gap here is the change in the government spending and how large the effects of this gap of this government spending is on the income is the multiplier multiplied by the change in government spending originally the autonomous spending were here at this point here autonomous spending were here before but now the autonomous spendings have decreased to this point here so as a result of the change in government spending recall that change in government spending is part of the autonomous spending so if government spending is negative then we expect that holding other autonomous spending constants the change in government spending which is negative here will decrease the autonomous spending overall and this is the answer to question c if you'd like to see more calculations on the multiplier and aggregate demand and other topics related to expenditure and income leave a comment below Thank you very much for watching if you found this video beneficial please kindly leave it a like and subscribe to the channel see you in another video thank you very much